two of my non-pulse having brothers, Vanguard One and Skarsgård, the dilapidated boat, have made it. They're an action figure. They have made it. They have done it. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and it's good to get Scars Guarded Vanguard 1, isn't it? But to start out today's episode, we're going to do a couple corrections. Last week, I said that the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Commander Bly was a fan channel exclusive. That was wrong. He's in an upcoming wave, and I think the reason that it's that way in my mind is, if, if I remember correctly, they showed Bly... And then they went to another show and showed two more characters and then two more characters. And then they went up for pre-order at different times. Something like that. It was a confusing mess. At least when it comes to pre-ordering little plastic figures, you know. I also blurted out that the Figma My Hero Academia Bakugo was a re-release when it's actually a new release. The reason I think that is because he was originally scheduled to come out with Midoriya in December. So I thought, oh, two re-releases get their My Hero line kicking again. That's not the case. And I would like to thank everybody who took the time to point that out to me. I love you all. But to kick off the actual news for this week's episode, let's start off with a heapin' helpin' of Robo Don't Know. Okay, okay, I know Jiren. I know his regular look where he's in the black, he's in the red. It's a costume of sorts. But I don't know Jiren or the reason why he's jacked and busting out of his clothes. But knowing what little I do know about Dragon Ball Z, I'm sure there was a little bit of... <laughs> Could I research this better? Sure I could, but it's not near as fun, baby! But that's how Bandai decided to make him in their figurized standard Dragon Ball line. Now this is a model kit with some alternate hands, a couple of power effects, and then two faces. Of course there's one screaming. It's, it's Dragon Ball! The kit will run you around $23 and ships in June. <laughs> Out of all that information, I couldn't remember the June part. Keeping with Dragon Ball though, I'm much more familiar with this version of Vegeta, even though it's been some years since I've watched it. I never thought I'd see an SH Figure Arts figure this big, but here we go. Here is Great Ape Vegeta, who stands between 12 and 13 inches tall. That is damn impressive. If I understand correctly, they've put detents in the joints and then even made some parts die cast to help with the heaviness of the limbs. Even going as far as giving it a sit your ass down stand <laughs> to help with that extra weight. There's a movable jaw and then an alternate face to give him a pokey out eye. Several hand options, including a set that can hold Goku like a breakfast burrito. And then a little statue Yajirobe to recreate the scene where, you know, he saves Goku by cutting off Vegeta's tail. And even that is an option. There's a full tail and then there's another one you can plug in for, you know, little stubby tail. This is a Soul Web exclusive, but all signs point to Bluefin bringing this into to other countries too, so I wouldn't worry too much about getting it. $175 ships in July. The Mattel Jurassic World Amber Collection is a long time coming. We saw the original prototypes back at San Diego Comic-Con 2018, and then Ian Malcolm and the regular Velociraptor was released in the fall last year. Not quite as nice as the original prototypes, but that, it, that just happens sometimes. We also knew Owen and Blue were coming. As they showed prototypes back then. They looked nice. Then we got some promotional pics not quite as nice, but still pretty cool. And then this week, we get pre-orders on Big Bad Toy Store for the both of them, with a release date of this month. But what surprised me is the addition of Charlie, too. I, I, there's not a lot of promotional pictures on the pre-order page, but it's supposed to drop this month, too. But that makes sense. All the Raptors seem to share a sculpt, although Charlie comes with his dental headgear. So, <laughs> it's a little bit different. Seems like there's a price hike on the line overall, though, with Owen being $27 and the Raptors being $35. Toys just getting expensive. Earlier in the week, Mezco revealed a little bitty video teaser of their 112th Collective Marvel Thanos, and I thought, ooh, they're going a little bit more low-key with their Toy Fair teases this year. If you remember, Thanos was a little sneaky peek from San Diego last summer where pictures weren't supposed to get out there, but they did. So it's good to lay eyes on it, but... The first thing most people thought were, man, that face looked kind of weird, a little sunken, a little unfamiliar, I guess you could say. But then a day or two later, not knowing if it was an alternate face or they had other options coming or they were just rebating the hook, they showed the same video teaser again, this time with a different face. This one was much more full, much grittier, more Thanos-y. You really know? Then today, they come along and just throw that sucker up for pre-order. The faces in these pics definitely look touched up, so 
I can't confirm. I don't know. Maybe they were going with the original face and then a crowd reaction forced them to change it real quick and then just Photoshop over these. Or that was always the original plan and the first video wasn't supposed to be shown or something. I, I don't know. Either way, I like the new faces better. That's what it boils down to. The bodysuit does look a little bit baggy and the shoulder pads are a little bit high. Put me in, coach. But the bagginess of the clothes makes me think classic comic, you know? In fact, I'd like to see a 112 figure of that. Just the plain old bright light blue and the orange on top and, you know, go from there. Make the black eyes with kind of a star field. Ooh, that Sweet. Comes with several sets of hands, including a light up infinity gauntlet that has two hand options. There's a fist, and then there's an open hand that can actually hold the included cosmic cube. We saw this with Red Skull, didn't we? And then there's three face options. Give me the cupcake. I said, give me the cupcake. Mmm, cupcake. $155. Oh, oh should release later this year. NECA used another Turtle Tuesday to tease another re-release re 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 of their 1990 movie Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures, which may or may not be good depending on your situation. These were originally released at a San Diego Comic-Con and then later at GameStop. So if you miss those, here's another chance. But it does appear they are including another bandana tie option where the two come down, split, and then come over opposite shoulders, which Dang it, why does that make me want another one? But I did take my RAF, put him in a third party overcoat, hat, backpack, so maybe I could get another RAF and then have him with the shoulders down. That only buying one, right? But I don't know how you complete this to do it. All the different versions. No info on how these were going to be released, but Toy Fair's around the corner. Another thing I got wrong last week, well, I, at the time I didn't know it was wrong, but I guessed that I was going to be wrong. I said that Super 7 was going to hold off their pre-orders for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimate Wave 2 until March and using February and even Toy Fair to leak out or, you know, tease the releases there. But no, meh, wrong. They jumped right in Monday with full-on reveal and then pre-orders later that day. As you know, the TMNT Ultimate, okay. <coughs> Ultimates line is based off the original Playmates action figures, but updated a bit, four horsemen eyes, more articulation, a little bit of modern aesthetic, just mixing it up a little bit. Leonardo's gonna look great next to the Wave 1 Raphael. Same kind of updates, modernization, textures, little bit of extra details here and there. Leonardo has the curved swords, Raph has the more round, thin size. They didn't give Leo the sad eyes, but at the same time, that always kind of bugged me. I was like, why are you so sad, Leo? You're the leader of turtles. You're a ninja. You have so much going for you. Bebop, I will always take a version of Bebop and Rocksteady. The pink on the face threw me off, and then I realized, oh wait, I didn't have Bebop. I had a few, but I didn't have all the turtles. So I had to go back and look, and the original has the pink on the face. Hell, I didn't even know he had a leg brace. So. Still, but not having them makes me want it even more, if that makes sense. Shredder, again, for some reason I didn't have Shredder, so I didn't know about the eyebrows being painted up on the helmet thing. Thankfully, he comes with an alternate head that doesn't have that. Looks a little bit more badass, a little bit more meaner. And yeah, Shredder doesn't have a shirt on. He's somehow keeping shoulder pads up on his shoulders, but he's fighting mutated ninja turtles. And then Mutagen, man. I don't remember mutagen man bad turtle fan bad no one said anyone has to buy all these or buy them at all if you don't like them especially you if you have no attachment to the character whatsoever but because of how cool he looks i'll probably get mutagen man do as i say not as i do kids 45 dollars a piece and these will release in the future <laughs> when it comes to super 7 it's one of those pre-order and forget about it lines. Although wave one may be closer than we think because Brian Flynn posted actual samples of both the foot soldiers and then Raphael. And what can I say, both are looking great. Sure, they're not the most super articulated figures out there, but the nostalgia factor is kicking. It was also noted that they are aware of the swapped arms on Raph, the muscles are backwards on the biceps, that should be fixed on final production. But I'm keeping my excitement in check because we all know things can happen to delay the process. You know, for instance, the Super 7 comic Conan that was delayed this week. The final shipment arrived and it was going to go through processing and start shipping out to customers, but then a packaging error was found and they actually had to take the whole shipment and send it 
back to the factory in order to get fixed. Now that makes me think it wasn't just a misspelling somewhere or something. It had something to do with the actual license and you don't want to piss off license holders. Because that's a huge chunk of change to just take a whole shipment and send it back overseas to get fixed, pay for that process, and then to get it shipped back again. To make things worse, the factories are on holiday, so it's not gonna be a quick process. They're now looking at getting the shipment back in April and shipping out to customers in May. But as an apology slash thank you, Super 7 will be adding to the package a bloody sword and spear on top of the already clean sword and spear. See, this is why I pre-order stuff and just forget about it. <laughs> and it's not just Super 7, it's any line. Like, you know, well, Metacom. Oddly enough, Metacom has announced another delay for one of their figures. But we're so used to it with Metacom and their Mafex line that it's just second, it's just like, oh, got pushed, whatever. Super 7 Y! Earlier this year, the Cyclops slipped from our grasp, being pushed back, and now it is the Mafex Avengers Infinity War Thor. It's supposed to come out this month, it's now been pushed to March. But again, what do we always say about Metacom? Never look them in the eyes. They get mean that way. I mean, Mafex is always late 78.6% of the time. Yep, that's what we say. I don't know what this picture is. It looks like it was smuggled out by some unsuspecting accomplice and then handed off in a dark laboratory to a shadowy figure and there's beakers all over the place and little electronic gizmos with waves going across them. But this seems to give us our first glimpse at the Transformers War for Cybertron Earthrise Skylinks and Scorponok. I had neither as a little kid, but dang it, looking at that Scorponok, how big and beefy it is, it's interesting. And Skylinks, if it's as cool as I picture it in my head right now, I'll probably pick up both of these. You know, again, characters I have no attachment to. What did I just say about not having to buy everything? Not as I do, children. Not as I do. But I do remember Scorponok from the comics, though. Does that count? Is that justifying a purchase? <laughs> yes, it is. Hasbro caused kind of a stir this week by announcing they will be re-releasing the Build-A-Figure Monster Venom as a fan channel exclusive but this time in Eddie Brock flavor. Well, I say stir. It was kind of more accepted than I expected. I expected, you know, I put the whole wave together and I built the monster Venom and now they're gonna just re-release it as a single, but it's in the wrong colors because Eddie Brock was never that big. <laughs> Most of what I saw was, you know, Eddie Brock was sometimes normal size and sometimes larger and there's been cases where he was big monster size. You know what? I don't have to buy everything. Good on you, fandom. Good on you. Pre-orders are open right now with a $30 price tag, and as far as shipping, I'm already seeing people online with these. And I don't know where they're buying them, or if they're shipping from somewhere, or they came in stock somewhere, but it should be any day now. Then there is the cruel, cruel mistress that is the Star Wars Black series. We saw a little trickle of the Empire Strikes Back 40th Anniversary Vintage card line earlier this year. It was kind of a, hey, woohoo! Later. This week we see a set on eBay and there's even people finding them at Walmart in the Midwest and also Meyer. I'm from Arkansas. I've never seen this store or heard it said aloud, so I thought it was major or major, but apparently it's Meyer. But that's okay. I've heard people say Walmarts too. Walmarts? It's not Walmarts. The wave consists of Yoda, Hoth Leia, Bespin Han, Adat Driver, and then Bespin Luke. All are re-releases, so if you already have the figures, no need to buy this. You don't have to buy everything unless you're a sucker for nostalgia cards, like somebody you may know, and god dang it, why do I have to buy another set of these? Do not do as Robo does. Or do as Robo does. If you want a set of vintage cards, go buy you a set of vintage cards. But getting closer pictures of Bespin Luke, it does confirm that that may be an all new head, plus some photo reel, so it definitely looks better than the original release. So, I gotta buy two of those. Oh, but that's not all. Showing up beside these is the brand spanking new Imperial Probe Droid, but not vintage enough for me to buy it. It's no white box with some print on it. So I only need the one to bust out, unless I want to army build these. Need a couple, get some Jedi Fallen Order stuff going on or something. But for all of us who bought the 3.75 inch two pack of Probe Droid and Vader, we can now toss that away. I'm loving drops like this more and more. I, I mean, we are online. We know stuff is coming, but not to be officially announced or know when we're getting it, and then suddenly it's popping up at stores. We're all kids at Christmas. It's just happening a lot lately, it seems. And it may be because Toy Fair's right around the corner, but it may be just like, hey, we're producing stuff. Go 
buy it. Because this kid is ready for some Star Wars stuff. It feels like it's been a while, right? And that's it for this week. I think, if I miss something, we'll pick it up next week. If you're interested in seeing any of these pictures bigger without me all, or information, links to pre-orders, that'll all be up on the Foosh front page Saturday at noon. Have you heard Toy Fair's coming? But if you enjoyed this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe, or whatever the platform you're watching this on allows. Much love to the plus. If you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Vulgar display of snarf. <laughs>